So if, if we want to try and control senescent cells without using senolytics, so what kind of lifestyle choices or what, what kind of lifestyle things can we do to, I, I guess, stop them forming? And it, once they formed, is there anything that we can do to remove them? Well, certainly we know that um, uh, obesity and diabetes uh, results in a massive senescent cell accumulation, even in very young people. Uh, so we, we know that um, one, of, one of the ways is to um, look at the diet, uh, particularly with respect to um, um, obesity. And obesity plus diabetes, we um, see uh, considerable senescent cell accumulation in adipose tissue. Uh, and that's the basis for some of the trials going on in that condition of senolytics. And in preclinical studies in mice that are high fat fed, um, we know they accumulate a lot of senescent cells um, and that if we don't high fat feed them, they don't get as many senescent cells. And if we clear the senescent cells in the obese animals, we improve their peripheral insulin resistance, et cetera. And it's been known for a long time that, for example, dasatinib, one of the things that physicians have to do are prescribing it for cancers. If, if they're giving it to a diabetic patient, they have to reduce their insulin dose because it improves their insulin sensitivity. Um, so... Um, uh, another thing uh, looks like uh, exercise may be able to prevent or delay senescent cell accumulation. A colleague, Nathan Graf, has done a lot of work um, showing that in um, uh, various kinds of studies. Um, we know that um, things like various drugs will induce senescence and, and radiation. Uh, we're worried for That's why NASA, for example, is worried about the Mars mission. Mm -hmm. and generation of senescent cells because we found that um, high energy protons, you know, uh, like a, in, in uh, the kinds of radiation that occurs in a solar flare uh, is particularly bad at causing cells to become senescent. Um, uh, we know that smoking uh, can induce uh, senescence and nicotine exposure. So there are a variety of lifestyle things that could be done to uh, prevent and in some cases maybe reduce existing burden of senescent cells. Right. So actually I wanted to kind of go back to the clinical trials, but are you measuring like the senescent cell levels or are you you're just looking at whether the condition gets better? And, and if you are measuring the senescent cell levels, are you, what are you using for that? It's like P16, P21, SA, beta gal, or how are you doing that? Well, what we do is we've got something we call the Translational Geroscience Network, and that's um, a consortium of Mayo, Harvard, Hopkins, universities of uh, Michigan, Minnesota, Texas, Connecticut, Wake Forest University, and then other uh, partners like St. Jude and Stegman Clinic and others who are uh, partners of the network. And what we, what we have in that network is what we call a facility for geroscience analysis. So across the trials that are going on, not just with senolytics, but with other agents that target fundamental aging processes like metformin, like rapamycin related drugs, like NAD precursors, um, we're measuring a panel of things um, in those patients. So we're getting um, uh, blood, we're getting buccal swabs uh, from uh, cheek swabs, um, we're getting urine, and in some trials, we're getting uh, biopsies of tissue, depending on the trials. We're also looking in some trials at the microbiome. And uh, in uh, the blood, there are upwards of 100 things that we're measuring. Uh, because one of the things we're in a search for is what are some of the better markers? We don't really know that yet. So we're doing this, we're trying to do the same blood markers across all the trials, irrespective of the intervention, irrespective of the patient group being studied, um, and irrespective of the site where it's occurring, the trials occurring, you know, like where, whether it's mm -hmm. in Texas or here. Um, and what we're asking is, um, you know, what are robust, uh, and part of the job of the network is to compile all these data across the trials and try to come up with um, a panel of uh, markers that we can use, not only of senescence, but of other factors to predict or, or tell us when a geroscience intervention, when a drug that targets or a, or a lifestyle intervention like food restriction or intermittent food, food, you know, food clocking or any of these things, are they affecting senescence cell burden, but are they also affecting the other pillars of aging? 
So we're measuring a lot of factors in the blood, including blood cells that are senescent, but also factors that senescent cells produce and not just proteins, but also um, uh, new, uh, you know, factors related to RNAs and DNAs that they produce. But we're measuring things like NAD and other pillars of aging as well across all the trials. We're measuring the epigenetic clock in the buccal swabs. Um, we're measuring factors in urine uh, that are related to some of the pillars of aging. And then in the, in the tissues, we're looking at a range of things that are related to senescence and other fundamental aging processes, especially related to inflammation and fibrosis. Interesting. And so what we're trying to do is come up with yeah. an answer to your question. What are going to, and I don't think there'll necessarily be one biomarker. I mm. think there'll be a panel. I think there'll be a composite score. Uh, and we found already in one of our early clinical trials where we looked at people with um, obesity and we biopsied their fat tissue uh, before and then 11 days after a three-day course of senolytics, we found that we had very tight correlation between adipose tissue senescent cells that we measured directly by looking at the biopsies of their adipose tissue and a panel of blood markers. It was 10, a composite score of 10 markers. And that that correlated very nicely, but that, that applies to that particular state of um, obesity with diabetes. It may not apply to Alzheimer's disease, for example. Right. So in the Alzheimer's trials, we're measuring the same things or in the trials of the childhood cancer survivors or uh, the trials for um, frailty or osteoporosis or um, any of the other trials. We're measuring the same things because we're looking for a common set of parameters, but not just that correlate with burden of senescent cells or other fundamental aging processes, but also change in response to interventions. Because what we really wanna have is things that eventually one day a physician could have in their office, a panel that they order, and that would tell them that that, that would be a way that they could monitor whether um, the, the, the person is having a response to the drug, in addition to looking at their clinical state. Right. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well, and we'll speak to you again soon.